All right, we're going to do a 10 plus 5. And we're going to practice some openings and try to see how it goes. So I'm going to be updating how I do this format. I was a little unsure before. Um, my goal here is to play a game and basically take it as far as I can. There's always a certain point in every game that I play where I just don't know what the next move is and I don't know the plan. Uh, so those are two main problems that I can encounter. And to try to make it a little bit simpler, I'm going to play known lines. Now this is a line I could already branch off into a few different directions. Why I decided to give up the bishop there in the moment, I'm not sure. But this is a good example. Um, I know his plan right now is to try to you know, force things open. I could do this and try to prevent this, uh, which kind of makes sense, e5. Can't play it right away, so he might play have to play something like that. Uh, knowing that this is going to be forever a hole because I don't have a light square bishop. Maybe it is still the line. I'm going to try because now I can just go this way. I was thinking originally going this way. Yeah, that's the plan I was thinking. Now, if he does push in here, I don't have to take. And then this pawn becomes a little bit awkward. So push, maybe just castle. Um, and if he pushes again, then this is kind of awkward. So he did all that. OK. Um, first thought is this, this, and then this. So I guess I can try that. But if I bring the rook over, he'll play c4 right away, I think. So. That being said, maybe I can try this first. I'm already way out of my known theory for this. And I think it's because I played uh, pretty quickly bishop to d7, which I don't know if I usually play that. I think that's probably the main line, the more common answer. But it's not really what I play. Uh, so his plan is to come here, here, and here which is a weakness I didn't think about, but it does kind of prevent me from doing this. But I could do two things. I can bring my rook here, which is what I was originally thinking, to push, takes, takes, takes. Yeah, I don't even know if I like that plan all of a sudden. I could sacrifice a pawn to try to get this doing something. I could also try to move my knight to get into f5. I'm already at pretty much a loss for plans here. So we've already reached our aha moment, or an oh crap moment. I've got other thoughts of coming in here, which is nice because if he ever takes, this bishop has some life here in some ways, especially if he does play c4. <clears throat> so I kind of like this. It's multi-purposed. Uh, if he takes there, I can take back, and then he takes my knight. But I don't know if that's so bad. Takes, takes, the knight can come in here, which is kind of annoying. I'll try it. If he takes, I can take back with knight, give my knight something to do. I also have an inner mezzo of here. Sorry, this arrow's weird. Here because the knight is blocking. That's why I'm trying to take advantage of this right now, if I can. If he captures, I can come here. If his queen moves, I can take back with the pawn, giving him a pass pawn, which I don't like. So I'll probably just give up the pawn for activity, knowing that I can't really get f4 in now. And he can come with f4, too. So not a great game. But I will explore it. And I'll put a link to the study that I create, which will ultimately go on the website also. Um, it'll go on the website. That way I can continue to update the lines that I come up with. Play something like this. I think f5. He can do the same thing. Yeah, f5. Knight tap captures here. Knight captures. Queen takes. Except now I've got f5 in. I could also maybe consider g6. It's a little bit slower, but it prevents all of this nonsense. And then I can still get f5 in. 
f5, yeah, I can't capture with this anymore because of that. Uh, playing g4, forking my knight and rook. And if I take with the pawn, that's the same problems. The queen is exposed. I'd like to get f5 in. f5, captures, captures, queen takes, captures, knight has life. But I have this square covered so I can slide my knight into f3. I don't know. I'm not really sure. Let's try it. Captures, captures, takes. So we got this move in. The only difference now is I have an intermezzo that I didn't even think about, which I kind of like. He doesn't have any checks. So I'm okay with this expo exposure because takes, 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 he could take here. Hmm. <clears throat> I don't ever want to take with this because this pawn is annoying. Takes, 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 pawn takes. Now that this pawn's at least weak, I'll try it. At least I'll open up his king. Maybe I get in a good day something like this in. Pawn, or knight takes. My bishop now has life. He's opened this up. I don't know about taking with the rook. Why didn't I think that was good for him? I don't know, maybe it's, you know, I can go here, the pawn now takes, I could then either slide this over, or even over here, takes, takes, maybe the bishop comes here, I think taking's probably fine, where does my bishop want to be? This is a square, this is a square. Hmm. He's still underdeveloped, but I don't know if that's for very long. Where does this knight wanna be? Can the knight get here? Not easily but someday it might, so. Where do I want my rook? One of these two squares. Here it's kind of like unprotected. Kind of want to put pressure on this square because if the queen ever takes, I've got a lucky day fork. I almost think I want this kind of play, but I want to get my rook or bishop in play first. If I go here and he plays here, it's a nice weakness. I'll slide back. Let's try here. Uh, what I just realized is that he can come here and force a trade. Trades I don't want. solves a lot of his problems. Yeah, maybe the rook was better. Now that I've played it, I'm like, eh, I don't like it. Because his his development issue is going to be solved if he comes here. Take, take. Yeah, it's um, a little unclear. Though I do have some ideas of still playing this with check, winning this pawn, exposing some stuff. I mean, trading the knight's not the end of the world for me because this square is annoying that he can never take advantage of. His bishop is blocked to only coming here or somewhere on this diagonal. Hmm. We got time. My thoughts here are to come here. That way I can take with check. 
takes takes rook takes uh, here maybe somehow I can get this move on first before that or if his rooks offline I can, and his queen's off maybe I can get this move in which you know my rook could have this diagonal which might be okay He could also slide here, and if he does that, I may slide, I may take, take, slide over, because if his rook then slides here, I'll have check winning the rook. Some ideas there. I'll probably play that pretty quick if he moves either. <clears throat> if he here goes here, I'll take there. I think this bishop's probably not going to do anything for a while. So I might as well just, yeah, so he went here. So I'll take the rook. He takes back. Because if I take, what if he comes here first? Um, then I take this pawn. If he takes, I go here, he gets a pass pawn. But maybe I can play around it. I don't know, I'll try this. Now I can play here because if he takes, my rook gets that square, which is nice. He cannot play this because of immediate take, which is what I was trying to say earlier, winning, winning the rook. <clears throat> so now my plan is to play here, here. But I may have to get this rook protected first. Maybe a simple move like this, hitting both of these. Down a pawn, but he has an exposed three pawns, I guess. <clears throat> so it's playable. Yeah, okay, he went there. He got to the square. He got to the square I didn't want him to get to. <laughs> but maybe I can get to a square that I don't, that I want to get to. Yeah, well played, well played. Because this is kind of annoying too. Push, comes in here, check, goes somewhere. Um, the knight is free to come up here, which is just kind of going to pose some problems. Yeah, I, d I don't want this free pawn, because I can try to go for both of them right now. <clears throat> and the threat he's probably coming in with is this, which is annoying. So let's play safer, I guess, and go here. Uh, if I go here, he's hitting some annoying mate-like ideas. Yeah, I think I've got to play here because this hits both um, the rook and here which is why the rook unprotected is a little tough now if he slides his knight in I have the pawn if he doesn't I probably would take this pawn because I'm hitting this a couple of times there's lots of tactics where I can check and take the rook <clears throat> So if he slides over, I take. If he pushes, I didn't think about that. Taking is, yeah, it's a good way to get rid of the, uh, yeah, okay. Okay, so I can take the pawn. At least it's even now, but it's certainly annoying, an annoying pawn or an annoying knight. But that being said, both of the pawns that protect the knight are a little bit blocked off or exposed. Still have potential checks. I still like the idea of coming here, here, when I can, if I can. But this now shuts my queen out from doing anything. Uh, 
Rook is already protected, so that's good. Is he trying to get in here? Uh, can't slide my queen anywhere now. It's probably suicide to do that. It's probably not a good idea to slide up either, but it does kind of cover things. Yeah, this looks so bad, but I'm going to try it. Because if he comes here, I'm going to slide. Well, he can't because of check. If he brings his rook up, he can't do that. What's he done? Yeah. Okay, we got, we got saved a little bit there. Um, I think that this move, um, I think that this was even right here. I think it's annoying for me, but I don't see any checkmates for him, and his rook's out of play. I'm going to do a brief analysis of this, because it's already, as you can see, playing it. But if I go back here, engine says it's plus one, and it doesn't seem like it goes much higher than plus two. I mean, his best point was right here. Yeah, so um, just looking at the very end, like I'm in okay shape. I played the moves I had to play, but it's even. This rook move seems okay. Yeah, at some point this is going to come in. So I can't be much, or he, I can't be looking very good here, um, but it's certainly playable. Um, okay, so let's go back. Like I said, I very quickly didn't know the moves with the uh, Rossellino Moscow variation. No, Rossellino is, uh, you play here first instead of d6. Um, just double checking. I play here, here, Russell Limo attack, yep. So yeah, I don't play that way, I usually play d6, and right here, this is where the branches go. So like I said, bishop d7 is the most common, it's just not what I usually play. I usually snap to knight d7, but I want to explore both of these in uh, different studies, so I'll put a link to that in the video, so anybody who watches in the future will see more updated versions of that. But just seeing some basic lines, how far did I go playing correctly? All right, queen d7, most people do. I usually play knight d7, but it's not the main way. I think this turns into c4. That's what I've seen a lot quickly. Now, he didn't do that. He castled. I just developed g to f6. Yep. Queen e2 is common, and then e5 is not very high. So this is where I branched off pretty quickly. So it's clear I don't know this line, um, which is good. It's good to study that. But regardless, not knowing lines, I'm at 22... Uh, where's my rating? 2275 now for rapid. So I know a bunch of lines, but whenever people play certain lines like this, it, you know, it happens. Um, you gotta learn from it. So e5, wrong idea. c3, not the best follow up, is it? It's more common c3. Uh, d3 is also option. And then just going into this variation, like nobody has ever played this in Masters. In Lee Chess, yeah, it's played a decent amount of times. But okay, um, I'll just run through the moves real quick, see what other obvious blunders. Could he have just taken here right away? No, because I was saying this. Now if he moves here, what's the issue? I don't see it right away, so I guess I would just take with the pawn and give him a pass pawn. Uh, what I missed about that is I'm <laughs> giving him a pass pawn, but I'm up a piece, so that is a non-point. That's why he can't play that right away. So I missed that obvious thing. So g3, I did think about g6, but then he did this move here. Um, yeah, he's ahead. I wanted to get f5 in, but that's just wrong. Takes, taking here first. Okay, that's a good way to expose the king. That's already stuff I didn't think about, but it's in a line that probably shouldn't be played. So there's no point really focusing on that. Um, really just avoiding this line completely if I'm gonna play the bishop. Uh, which is the main move, the queen is going to be the most uh, likely follow-up. So, okay, uh, good game, uh, saved by tactics, that pretty fun one that I kept open in mind um, at the very end. Um, but I don't think there's really much else to explore, except uh, what move should I have played here? Um, yeah, so we're pretty much in the game. Taking, 
Rook, I, those were some candidate moves. Yeah, I didn't like this, but for a different reason because of this. Forcing this, forcing that. Uh, yeah, I don't really know if I understand that. So getting this over here, what happens if he plays this? Bishop here for some reason. Whoops, that bad. Here, takes, takes. Uh, somehow this is a weakness that you're trying to provoke. I don't quite understand it. Yeah, um, played what I had to. I like the rook because of, if I don't do the rook, if I do something like coming here, um, I think I thought he was going to do something like this. No, it's just weakening, but it's not losing. Okay, good game. Thanks for watching.